Hi everyone, Mrs. Kirk checking in on you again with um, our 10.8 quadratic applications continued notes. So yesterday I showed you the 10.7 notes and they were very lengthy. I do apologize, almost 30 minutes of notes, um, but there is so much to learn about that graphing calculator. So this lesson will be a lot quicker. I'm gonna walk you through one more example. Uh, again, I'm gonna ask you that, uh, that you have your um, TI-84 um, or a TI-83 calculator handy. So I'm gonna be using that myself. And um, I'm not gonna be graphing anything with graph paper today. So just a regular line sheet of paper will be all uh, that you're gonna need. We have one example and it has three parts. So hang in there and uh, we can get through this. I know you can. So first of all, here's my first example. So this would be a good time to pause the video so you can um, write down what the example is. This is our 10.8 quadratic applications continued. And the question says, a coin is thrown upward from the top of a platform and the height of the coin is represented by the equation y equals negative 4.9x squared plus 19.6x plus 300. y represents the height in meters and x represents the time in seconds. Part A. How tall is the platform from which the coin is thrown? Okay, well, let's think about this. So again, I'm going to go through this a little bit faster than yesterday. Um, but let's see here. We want to know the how tall the platform is um, from which the coin is thrown. So the first thing I would recommend is let's take this equation here. And let's go ahead and type that in our calculators. I'm going to slide this up. Got my calculator here. Turn it on. Go to my y equals. Clear out whatever's in there. I still have the same equation from yesterday's notes. I clear that out. We're going to type in the equation, negative 4, oops, negative 4.9, we'll use x, um, x here, squared, here's the squared button, plus 19.6x plus 300. And again, yesterday we are talking about, um, I'm going to clear out whatever else I have in here. Uh, yesterday I talked about using that zoom 6 button and uh, going from there. So I'm going to start with that. So I'll start with zoom 6, and what that does is it takes me back to a normal uh, standard window. So here's my zoom six. And there's my standard 10 by 10 window. So I see the parabola is going up. Nothing's really happening. Nothing's really happening. I can see it come down just a smidge right there. So again, I'm going to write down my steps for myself because these are my notes and I want to be able to figure this out. So here are my steps. So type equation into y equals. Step two is to use your zoom six. And again, that zoom six takes me back to a normal window. Um, and now, just like yesterday, step three would be to um, manipulate the window. And I'm trying to see the entire curve I want to see the parabola looks like this. Right now my parabola looks nothing like that. So to manipulate the window, I'm really going to focus on the Y max. So again, to do that, I'm going to push window. And I'm going to change the Y max. All right, so here I go. I'm going to slide this up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go to window. I have to change my y maximum. So I'm going to arrow down to where it says y max here. And I know my equation, I had 300 at the end. So I'll change my y max to be something bigger than that. So I'll do 500. So I'll push graph. And let's see what this shows us. Actually, it's quite good. I can see uh, the entire parabola right there. Um, all right. So let's check this out. I don't know that I can see where it hits the ground. So I might need to manipulate that as well. If I need to see a little bit more to the right, that's the X value. So I'm gonna go back to my window, I'm gonna change my X max. I just need to see a little more, so I'll say 15 here. Let's check out how this looks. Perfect, I can see the parabola opening, um, going upwards and coming down, I can see where it hits the ground. So this is a great um, window here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down my window. Whenever you change your window, you should write it down. Um, let's see, change my y max, and in this question, I also had to change my x max a little bit. So, again, I'm going to write down what my window is. I'm 
The window in this case was negative 10 to 15 and negative 10 to 500. All right, but still that doesn't answer the question. The question says, how tall is the platform from which the coin is thrown? So this is um, what the pr pr um, problem looks like. We have this parabola. Uh, this would be my platform. So again, I'm a visual person, so I'm gonna jot that down in my notes here on what, what it's looking like here. So essentially, this is what's happening in the first quadrant. This would represent my platform. And this represents the ground. So, I wanna know how tall the platform is. So I'm looking for this spot right here. This spot right here, if I'm thinking about it, uh, that would have an X value of zero. So I'm looking for the Y intercept. And I'm looking for where X equals zero. I think the fastest way of doing that would be to just look at right at my table. If I look at my table, I can figure out where x, what x equals zero and um, what the y value would be. So at this point, I'm gonna go a second graph. Here it is, x equals zero, and there's my maximum height, the, the height of my platform right there, 300, which is pretty cool because that matches my original equation here, this value here. What was the starting point? Because if I think about it, if I put x, if I put zero in for x's, those would cancel out and just leave me with 300. So if I want to make a note here, this number at the end, that is the height of the platform. It's also the y-intercept. Okay, so I'm gonna go back down here to answer my question uh, to figure out what that value was. I typed on my calculator, second graph. And I looked for where x equals zero. Uh, the answer was y equals 300. And this particular question says, uh, this is gonna be in meters again. So I'll say 300 meters is the height of that platform. All right, so that's the first part. Again, there's only three parts to this question. So my part B is, what is the coin's maximum height? So I'm gonna write that down. What is the coin's maximum height? Uh, and I'll put to the nearest tenth again. All right, so that, that's an indicator right there. Because it's the tenth, it's not gonna be a nice number. I can't just look at my table. So I wanna go back through those steps from yesterday and how to find the maximum. So I'm gonna do second trace choice four for maximum. I'll write that down. So I did second. The more times you write it down, the better chance you'll have of remembering it. So second trace. I'm gonna pick choice four for maximum. And when I do that, if you remember from yesterday, in the bottom of my screen, it says left bound. So I'm gonna move my cursor so it's on the left-hand side of the maximum someplace. Again, this is where the maximum is roughly, right where my pen tip is. My cursor is definitely on the left-hand side of it. I'm gonna push enter. Then I'm gonna move my cursor to the right-hand side of my pen tip. So there goes my cursor, just someplace that's so it's on the right-hand side. There's definitely on the right-hand side there. You don't want your cursor to be close to the maximum. It's gotta be far on the left, far on the right. Push enter. Again, something to note is that on top of your screen, you see these two arrows. That's showing my calculator that the maximum is someplace between these two arrows. And if I look at my calculator, yeah, the maximum is definitely someplace between those two arrows. Now it says guess, so I'll push enter one last time. And on the bottom of my screen, it says maximum and it gives me the value. Now my calculator says it's 2.0000008 and 319.6. Um, yours might say exactly two, 0 0.00009 at the end or a seven at the end. This part might be a little different than mine, but the Y value should match for sure. All right, so I'm gonna copy that value down. Uh, so the maximum is for my calculator, two point, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. 
followed by an 8, and then 319.6. And then to answer this particular question, it says, what is the coin's maximum height? So it's 319.6 meters. And the last part of this, uh, part C, the last part of this is how long to the nearest tenth of a second will the coin be in the air? How long to the nearest tenth of a second will the coin be in the air? So in this question, again, uh, I'm a visual person. I'm going to draw a picture of what this looks like one more time. I've got a coin being thrown from a platform, hitting the ground someplace, and I'm looking for how long it's going to be in the air. Well, the coin is definitely in the air this entire time until it reaches the ground right here. So I'm looking for how long it's in the air. I'm looking for this horizontal distance. I'm looking for what this root is or again, what, what the zero is. So to figure that out one more time, just from yesterday, again, this is very, um, very brief. You want to go back to y equals, type in y2 equals zero. So let's see here, go back to my y equals, arrow down to y2 and put in a zero. Then you wanna to go to second, trace so here's my second trace screen and you're gonna pick choice five for intersect I'm looking for where the parabola is going to intersect that new line so now here it says first curve so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my cursor and move it to this intersection which is over here so I'm going to use this arrow key to move my cursor to that intersection. When you're finding the zero or you're finding the root, you do want the cursor to be on it or pretty close to it. Push enter three times. One, two, three. Now it says intersection, gives me the value right at the bottom or copy that number down. Again, I'm gonna write down what happened. Second trace, choice five, I move the cursor to the root. And then I pushed enter three times. And again, you want to push enter kind of slowly. If you push it too quickly, your calculator can't comprehend it that fast. It's not like your cell phones. You definitely have to give it a little bit of time to process. Um, so push enter three times kind of slowly. And it should say the word intersection on your screen. If it does not say intersection, you went too fast. All right, so I'm going to write down my answer here. The intersection was 10.0. Zero seven six one six eight comma zero. So to answer this question, it wants to know how long. So there's tenth of a second was the um, coin in the air. So the coin was in the air for ten point one seconds. These are very common um, algebra one. Uh, final exam questions. Uh, I went through this just with you to help you master the use of your graphing calculator. Here's a full screenshot of my entire set of notes for the day. Um, I really appreciate you taking your time to watch this video. It was about 14 minutes. Uh, thank you so much and I hope that this helps. Uh, again, watch it over and over if you need to. Pause where you need to and try to master the use of your calculators. Uh, the homework that matches this actually um, is uh, just going to be the 10.9 review sheet. I'm going to post that on WITS, and um, that's a review for the entire unit. So we've got completing the square, you've got um, finding the zeros or finding the roots, axis of symmetry, graphing. There's so much to do there. So I'm going to go ahead and post that on WITS for you um, along with this video. Thank you so much again for trying your best. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to hear from you guys soon.